Alright, now that we're all seated, uh, good evening. I hope you are enjoying the first day of J and Beyond here. Uh, I'm Nicolas Yonishopoulos, I'm the lead developer of Akiba Backup, Admin Tools, Akiba Subscriptions and uh, a gazillion other uh, stuff that I'm making for Joomla. I'm here to talk about um, active security for, for Joomla websites. Actually, this is kind of Mission Impossible because I'm trying to address this huge topic of securing your sites in 30 minutes or less. Uh, it's a tough job, but uh, well, uh, I will try to do my best. When we talk about security, we can say that a site is much like a building. You have uh, different phases in its construction and maintenance in order to have a building which doesn't collapse to rumbles uh, on the ground, you need to have strong foundations, uh, you need to have careful construction, and you also need to have active maintenance of the building. So uh, if we say that a site is like a building, then what is the foundation of, uh, of a site? When you're talking about the foundation of something is where it sits on top, and your site is sitting on top of a web server, so obviously you need to have a, a, a secure server set up in order to have a secure site at all. How can you do that? Just a very few easy steps. You can start by having always the latest version, so of all the server uh, components that uh, you're using on that machine. Uh, for example, PHP, MySQL, your Apache web server, your FTP server, uh, and everything else that you have on your installation. And uh, since you're most likely using uh, a Linux box to, to host your site, it's as simple as running your Linux distributions uh, update command um, every so often. For example, if you have an Ubuntu server, you can just run uh, apt get update and apt get upgrade uh, every few days, and it will automatically pull in all, all, all the latest versions of everything. Uh, obviously, if you're using cPanel, you can just have cPanel compile everything from scratch. Um, you, if you're running your own server, you should know that. If you're using someone else's server, uh, if your host is managing your server, then your host should do that. And you just have to, to make sure that they do follow up on, uh, uh, on these changes. Um, another thing that you can have on a web server uh, which is based on the Apache uh, web server, actually. You can uh, install something which is called mod, mod security. It's an Apache module which acts uh, pretty much like uh, a guard in front of your site. It uh, sees all the requests coming in. It tries to match them against uh, some patterns which are known to be uh, uh, what malicious requests look like and block them. And this can actually prevent a lot of uh, very widespread uh, hacking attacks by script kiddies, which try to exploit known vulnerabilities on older versions of Apache and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, if you want to use mod security, you also need some very good rules to have mod security know what to do with uh, uh, malicious requests, actually to, to know which requests uh, might be malicious. Um, the best rules are uh, the, the atomic rules. Uh, they have a free version, which is uh, lagging, uh, I believe, 90 days behind their paid version. Uh, but even the free rules are good enough for most simple websites, like the ones that we have. Of course, if you have a mission-critical website, then uh, it's a very good idea to have the paid rules. And, I mean, if you have such a high-profile website, you can afford it. And there are also OWASP rules, 
but uh, OWASP rules are always built for the latest version of Apache, and the latest version of mod security, and sometimes you will find that your Linux distribution is lagging a few versions behind. Again, you should only be concerned with that if you're managing your own dedicated server. If it is a managed server, or a shared server, uh, or a VPS, which is also a managed server, then uh, this is something that your host has to do, and you can just ask your host to make sure that they're using mode security with a sensible uh, rule set. Um, now, even if you don't have a dedicated server and you're on shared hosting, if you are on any kind of hosting, the m most major thing that you should be concerned about are your permissions and ownership. How many of you actually understand the, the concept of permissions and ownership in uh, Linux? That's very good. That's the majority, right? So I can just uh, go a little uh, faster uh, with that. Mm. You need to have some sensible ownership and permissions. Uh, each site that you have on a server should be owned by its own user. Ideally, you should, uh, you should have one user account per site that you're hosting. Um, all of the directories should have uh, 0755 permissions and all files should have 0644 permissions. Uh, this allows the owner of the user, which is the uh, user you have assigned to this uh, website, to do everything on the folders and files, and it allows Apache, which runs under a different user, to read the directories and the files. And if you are going to do that, then it's also a very good idea to, uh, to use uh, SQPHP or uh, FastCGI Process Manager uh, or ModITK, which is still uh, experimental in Apache, because this ensures that Apache is not going to run as a random user. For example, uh, nobody in uh, most Linux distributions or www-data in uh, uh, Debian derivative uh, distributions. But it's going to run as the same user that owns all the files on your site. And this allows you to have even stricter uh, directory and folder permissions, for example, your folders can be 0700 and your files can be 0600, which means that uh, each site is essentially isolated from any other site. So if I am a hacker and I hack uh, site A on the server, I cannot do anything with site B. I can't even read its files. Uh, otherwise, on the typical uh, shared server setup or the typical uh, VPS setup, if I hack one of your sites, I can at least read everything on the other sites, including all the passwords that you have put inside your configuration.php files. And this is not a very good thing to happen, right? I mean, then you have all the database uh, uh, passwords leaked out. You may have FTP uh, passwords leaked out. It can be messy very fast. So uh, if you have uh, the option and you want a secure site, just try using SQPHP. Uh, FastCGI Approach Manager, etc. Um, if this all sounds a, a little too much to remember, I have uh, uh, written uh, everything, uh, a, a concise introduction to um, uh, user ownership and permissions in Akiba Backup's user guide. And I have also written uh, an article uh, in my blog, and it's also uh, featured uh, in, the, in an old uh, version of the uh, Joomla community magazine, which is called 777, uh, the number of the beast. Uh, you don't have to actually photograph the URLs because I'm going to give you a link to the presentation towards the end of the presentation. Uh, you can sit back and enjoy and uh, sleep on the sound of my voice. Uh, sorry, that's a different, uh, yeah. Uh, so. Let's say that you have a dedicated server and you want to make it all, all of this happen automatically without having to set up every last bit uh, uh, of this thing. Well, uh, a great uh, guy from the Joomla community, Matt Thomas, has actually created a script which uh, takes a, a blank installation of Ubuntu server and sets everything up. And he's so kind as to put this script on GitHub. Uh, well, 
some of its bits are, are overkill, uh, some bits are missing, but it will create a very solid uh, base system, uh, a secure system that you can actually uh, use to create a, a secure server. So getting past this foundation uh, stuff, which doesn't apply to, to most people since they're not managing their own servers, let's go to, to the real stuff. The careful construction of the site. Since you are the site builders, the extension developers, etc., it's your job to make sure that uh, the site you're building for your client uh, and the site you're building for yourself, let's not forget about this aspect, uh, is a very secure setup. Um, and there are some very easy rules to follow. For example, you have to update yesterday. And I really mean that. Whenever there is a new security release of Joomla, of uh, a component, a module, a plugin, or even a template, how many of you consider that you need to update your templates? Only you? Templates actually have PHP code, you know? Uh, there are many sites which have been hacked because the template was actually insecure. So whenever there is a security release of each and every extension that you're using on a site, apply it, like right now. The easiest way to do that, take a backup of your site, uh, create a, a copy, try the update, make sure nothing breaks, apply it on your live site, and then you can go sleep at night. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be so confident that I could relax and sleep at night. Um, now, this is when you have some extensions installed, but what about when choosing the extensions to install? Not all extensions are created equal, uh, and not all uh, what appears to be open source developers are actually open source developers and uh, uh, being very honest about what they're doing. There are a few, let's say, establishments which uh, distribute free extensions or uh, leak uh, paid extensions, uh, which are uh, uh, known to put quite a, a few lines of sinister code in what they disseminate. I'm talking about Warriors, okay? Uh, it's a bad idea to install Warriors on your site because you, you have to trust the guy who stole the extension and gives it to you that it, he hasn't modified it. Uh, in nine out of 10 uh, Wars distributions of my software that I have examined, there were backlinks, there were uh, some other backdoors installed. Yeah, so you get what you pay for. And there are also some templates uh, which are supposedly free, but they do some very funky stuff like uh, 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 they have this uh, piece of JavaScript code, and whenever Googlebot comes, they present some uh, spam links. And whenever you go to your site, you don't see this kind of, uh, of stuff going on. So uh, make sure that you select the software that you install on your site very wisely. Uh, prefer non-extension developers, uh, ask around, uh, uh, make sure that whatever you're using, someone else has already used it, and. Uh, he can tell you that, yes, that thing works. Okay, it's pretty much common sense, but uh, it's very easy to forget to have this kind of common sense uh, when you're developing a site. And now, uh, do we have ladies here? Okay, Pl please cover your ears and your eyes because I'm going to uh, say an inconvenient truth, length matters. I'm talking about the password, of course. Why does the length matter? matter? Because of that. It doesn't look like a brilliant machine, right? I mean, it's a bare-bone thing. It's on the carpet, photographed. But this thing, uh, right now, uh, when it was built, it cost uh, 2,700 US dollars. Now it costs much, much less. It has a, a series of uh, graphics card, a high-end graphics card, a crappy processor, but uh, this thing can uh, crack um, 
right now 33.1 billion passwords per second. 33.1 billion passwords per second. How does that translate to password cracking? A simple table. If you have a simple numeric password, like the first one, who recognizes that date? No one? You should be ashamed. It's uh, the date that uh, Joomla 1.0 was uh, released. Okay. Um, it takes just um, a few nanoseconds to crack it. If you have a slightly more complex password like admin, who of you is using admin admin as username and password? That's better. Okay. This is the eighth time, I think, that I'm giving this presentation. The first time that I gave the presentation, everybody had a hand up. I'm using admin admin. Now it's nobody. That's an improvement over one and a half year. Well, a simple password like that also won't last much. It, uh, just uh, 0 0.002 milliseconds to crack it. Then you can have a very complex password, which uh, is uh, 14 characters uh, long. It has uh, uh, all these alphanumeric, uh, uh, all these alpha characters. It's going to take about uh, 200 years to crack. Then you can add uh, different cases, you can add numbers in there, uh, stuff like that. It's going to take 340 million years to crack, but it has a problem. You know what the problem is with uh, this kind of very secure password, which is the kind of password that your IT team wants you to have on your site? Please reset the password by heart. You can't. That's the real problem. So, you can actually do something much better take four or five uh, unrelated words which don't make a sentence, put them together and use them as your password. It's very safe. Uh, it can take a billion years. If they're using a dictionary attack to crack the password, it will take them a few hundred years with current technology. So I would say that for the next 10 years, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of password is secure enough for all intents and purposes. So next time you're going to pick a password for whatever you're doing, uh, just think about the length of the password and how it relates to the cracking speed. Now, when I build a site, nothing on my site runs unless I have told it to run. And this is very important. Lock it down. Don't let any arbitrary file be accessible and executable on your server. I mean, what is the common scenario for hacking a website? You have uh, an old or vulnerable version of a component which allows, you, which allows an attacker to upload arbitrary files in a well-known location. So he goes ahead, he uploads a C99 uh, variant script, he knows uh, the name of the file, he knows where it is stored on your site, so he accesses that, and now he has full access to your server and he can go ahead and hack your site, and he can do other nasty stuff. He can make the hack so elaborate that it will be extremely hard for you to unhack the site. However, if you disallowed him from running that C99 variant script, then all of this wouldn't happen, obviously. And disallowing, running, uh, arbitrary PHP files is actually much easier than you think. You can do that with some very simple .ht access rules. Uh, I already have uh, uh, the master .ht access file uh, for uh, three years, I think, uh, an old version of which is already included by somebody else, not me, in the uh, Joomla documentation wiki. I think it's under the, uh, the security tips or something like that. Um, ever since I have updated the script and made it much better, um, or if you don't want to bother with writing the .htaccess file yourself and you prefer using um, a component uh, with a graphical user interface, you can use Admin Tools Professional, uh, which is a component I'm making and has uh, the .htaccess maker, which automatically generates this .htaccess for, for your site. Speaking of which, it's a good idea to armor up. Uh, install a security extension on your site. It doesn't have to be mine. I'm not here to, to sell my stuff. Uh, 
A security extension can act as a, as a second filter after mod security, uh, or should I say a third filter, because actually when you have a request, it is filtered by Apache's mod security. Uh, some basic filtering is done by Joomla itself, but some things might still fall through. So a security extension is trying to, uh, to catch all those requests that made it through the first two filters, uh, figure out when something odd is going on and uh, block the request. Uh, so it's a good idea to, to have one of the security extensions because it will help you secure your site even more. But of course, uh, it's not a panacea. It's not going to uh, uh, magically make your site invulnerable to hackers. If anyone says that he has found such a solution, please shoot him. So getting past the first two phases of site building, we have now active maintenance. Um, just like when you have a building, when you build it, it's great, it's new, it's clean, it's working great, but as time passes, a building starts having defects, things break down, and if you leave it like that, it's going to collapse. You actually have to maintain it. The site, when you build it, it's great, it's new, it's working, but as time goes by, it starts collapsing. You need to maintain it. So what do you have to do to make sure that uh, your site is not going to suddenly fall apart? Uh, well, first, take backups. I say that uh, the three rules for maintaining a site is have backups, have backups, and have backups. And the fourth rule is also to have backups. You can never have too many backups, you can never have too frequent backups, and you can never have too many copies of a backup. There is one catch. A backup all by itself is nothing, unless it is tested. So whenever you're getting a backup of your site, manually or with an extension, please, pretty please, test your backup. Whenever you're changing something major on your site, or your server, test your backup. Because then, after six months, you might realize that the backup you have actually was partial. It was missing the SQL database, or it was missing all the files that you actually wanted to backup, but you never bothered to, to check. So please remember that an untested backup is as good as having no backup at all. While you're at it, you should also monitor your file changes. I mean, when your site gets hacked, what happens? Some of the files changes, right? Uh, if you were able to figure out when a file changes on your site, you would know that something bad is going on, and uh, you could go in and uh, figure out how you got hacked, uh, fix the, the cause of the hack, and then fix your site. Uh, so you need to be able to monitor file changes. Um, I can tell you of, uh, of two ways that I have and I'm using on my own sites. Uh, if you're taking very frequent backups, like uh, daily or twice daily, you can uh, compare uh, backups with each other using a, a small tool I have developed, which is called SiteDiff. Of course, it works only on backups created by Kiba Backup, but yeah, well. Uh, site diff. Site diff. The, the differences between the, the two backups. It will tell you which files have changed, added, uh, have been added, have been deleted, or have stayed the same. Uh, so you can understand what is going on with your site. Uh, the other thing that I have developed is a feature in Admin Tools Professional, which is called uh, PHP File Change Scanner. Um, and as the name implies, it uh, takes a look at all your PHP files and compares their date stamps uh, and MD5 uh, stamps with a previous version and can figure out if the file has changed. Uh, obviously, you need uh, to have a backup uh, in order to figure out what the changes are that have been made to the file, but yeah. Um, of course, you can also develop your own scripts. 
um, if, you, if you want to, but uh, it's a very good idea to monitor this kind of file changes. Um, speaking of monitoring, it's also a very good idea to keep an eye on the logs of your server. You have uh, your access logs, right? It, it's very uh, funny to take a look at them from time to time and see all those strange requests which uh, come in and don't look like normal traffic. These are hacking, uh, hacking attempts. Uh, sometimes you will see a few odd pieces there. For example, I see uh, a lot of attacks targeting IIS, an old version of IIS. I think it was IIS 4.0. Of course, I don't use IIS on my site. But these are script kiddies. I don't worry about this. But I also see a few other attempted attacks which are actually clever. And whenever I see such an attack, I try to uh, include a rule either in my .ht access or uh, in admin tools professional to guard myself against uh, those threats. It's also very good for you to do the same thing and uh, search your logs for, uh, uh, for strange requests because it will tell you um, if there is someone who's trying to hack into your site. And probably you can uh, ban their IP for a couple of days so that they cool off or uh, you can uh, find the pattern in the, in the request and include a .ht access rule to deny this kind of requests. In any case, in spite of this all, inevitably, at some point, your site might get hacked. So what do you do? First, don't panic. Yeah, that's the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy, don't panic, right? Yeah. If you get hacked, uh, we've got instructions. I mean. There, is, uh, there, there are some bits of instructions throughout the Joomla wiki, if you can find them. Tip, if you're trying to search the Joomla wiki, don't use the search box. Use Google. Type in your, your request, and then site, colon, uh, uh, docs.joomla.org, and Google will very kindly do the search for you, the one that the, the Joomla wiki can do. Um, I have tried to compile all the information that I have been using to unhack websites uh, into a document which I've made available through akibabackup.com. Uh, I have the URL here. Uh, of course, if you have backups, your life will be much easier because you can restore a backup, figure out what caused the hack, and also fix that. Because if you just restore a backup of a hacked website, you can expect it to be hacked again the next day. And, well, these instructions about unhacking and security work best when you review them before you enter panic mode. So uh, just try to, to find uh, a spare hour of your time that you don't have, I know. Same, same thing here. And read the instructions today. So. When and if the inevitable happens and you get hacked, you know exactly what to do. I mean, it's, it's like a pilot training. Pilots don't expect to crash. But they crash all the time in the simulator, right? Because they have to know what to do if their plane uh, starts falling. They don't want to start reading the manual while the, the plane they are trying to fly is going towards the ground, right? The same thing here. Uh, Okay, so before I start uh, taking your questions, well, uh, if, you, if you or your clients, probably your clients, uh, don't have a, a subscription on my stuff and they won't really want a subscription, well, uh, till the end of uh, next month, there's this coupon code, JAB12, which is very difficult to remember, yes, uh, which will give them a 20% discount. Uh, of course, you know that you can buy one subscription, then install my software on all the sites that you have ever or are going to build. OK, so your questions. No questions, guys. You're such a great audience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about it? Is this, uh, is this good 
I think they're necessary except two. I think that they're necessary except two. Uh, one is about uh, allow if you're a low pen. Uh, they tell you that you should disable that. I disagree because since PHP 5.0, there is another directive which is uh, uh, allow if URL include, and this is the one which should be turned off. Allow if URL open can remain turned on. Uh, and the other uh, objection that I have is moving your configuration.php outside of your web route um, is actually pointless. Uh, there are two ways I can read all the values in configuration.php. Uh, the first way is that I have found a vulnerability in an extension which allows me to dump all the, on the, all the global configuration data of Joomla in which case, no matter where you have your configuration.php file, Joomla will have read it and everything will be dumped. And the other way uh, is if I have uh, uh, some kind of, uh, of read access uh, on your, on your uh, site's files. Uh, obviously, if I'm able to read your site files, it also means that I have the same read permissions as Joomla, so I can figure out where you have put your configuration.php file and read it. Uh, there was only one kind of attack that would have been prevented if you had moved configuration.php outside of your web route, and it was the kind of attack, of attack that was addressed in, um, uh, in PHP 5.3.10, uh, I think, and PHP 5.3.10, Point four point one, which would only apply if you were using PHP as uh, CGI, which nobody does. So uh, these are the only two objections I have uh, against the security checklist. Everything else, I believe that it's it's something that you should do. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. I would say that cPanel is just like any other software. If you're using an ancient version of cPanel, um, it's not going to be very secure. Or if the, uh, the guy who's managing the cPanel server doesn't compile new versions of Apache and PHP on a regular basis, then of course your server will be vulnerable. Uh, as for cPanel itself, uh, I haven't seen any security vulnerabilities in the latest version, uh, but of course it's software. There might be some security vulnerability. I mean, uh, all by itself, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, cPanel is just an interface which allows you to do something more easily. I mean, if you have no problem editing configuration files by hand, you don't need cPanel. I mean, for, for uh, my own uh, site, I'm using a cPanel uh, host because uh, uh, I have a good deal with them. But uh, for my test server at home, I'm using an Ubuntu server box uh, with no configuration uh, interface whatsoever. I'm just editing text files. Uh, I can't say that uh, one is more secure than the other. They're just different. I will um, tell you this. Imagine that you're a soldier. You can go to battle like that, and the first bullet will kill you. You can have a, a, a thin layer of, uh, of protection, and probably a distant hit won't kill you, but a direct hit will uh, kill you too. Or you can wear a huge armor with uh, four inch uh, plates of steel, and no bullet can kill you, but you can't move. It's the same thing with web servers. The more security layers you add, uh, the more performance uh, hit you have on a server. However, this was relevant 
back uh, in uh, let's say 1998 when you had Pentium 3s as uh, server machines. Right now, if you're running a dedicated server, uh, all the impact of, uh, of those uh, tools is minimal. Uh, of course, if you are on a shared host, which hosts uh, like 3,000 sites on a single machine, every single layer is going to have a significant impact because you're running too many sites. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's always a matter of finding a balance between uh, performance and security. You know what server is the most secure one? The one which is not plugged. If it's not plugged in, it's secure. Once you plug it in, Yes? Uh, you didn't mention any software like uh, IP tables based um, uh, solutions in your presentation. Yep. Is that because you don't feel that they're necessary? Or? Well, uh, they are necessary. Uh, I took it for granted that they're installed with your Linux distribution because I haven't seen a Linux distribution in the past five years which doesn't have a firewall enabled by default. Un unless you're building your own Linux distribution, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I also had 30 minutes, <laughs> so I just uh, decided to uh, cut off a few slides. Yep. Uh, yes. In terms of achieving the highest or the best level of security, um, is it better to get a dedicated server where you have the control, or to trust a hosting provider to have your best interests at uh, heart? Okay. Uh, I will ask you a different question. What is the best car? Is it uh, a Smart 42 or a Lamborghini? It depends on your driving skills and what you want to use the car for. It's the same thing with the server. I mean, what is uh, the kind of site that we're talking about and do you have an IT team or not? Uh, if you have the skills and uh, the project is worth the trouble, then go with a dedicated server. If you have a, a very small, uh, low-budget website uh, with no IT team, if you go with a dedicated server, the dedicated server is not going to be maintained and will become insecure in a matter of weeks. In that case, probably a shared server is a better solution. So there is no, uh, this is the correct solution, this is the wrong solution. Otherwise, we'd only have one type of servers. Yes. Yes. Uh, for the permission issues, uh, is that still a good choice? I, I made a passing reference when I was talking uh, today. Yeah, but uh, mod IDK is still considered experimental. Okay. After, uh, I think it's two and a half years that it's been out there, it's still experimental. So, uh, can you trust it? Well, uh, I haven't seen any problems with it, but. Uh, if it's not officially stable, then probably you should go with, uh, with FastGI Process Manager, which is the stable and the most performant solution right now. So if we have no other questions, uh, thank you very much for being such a great audience. <laughs>